All right, folks, it's Thursday at CES. The show is almost over, and Justin and I have taken a look at a lot of stuff, mostly VR. Mm -hmm. Oculus is really impressive. Earlier today, you may have seen the video that went up. If not, you should check it out, because that's really good. But we also saw some really crappy virtual reality, <laughs> if I, you can call it that. A lot of people are definitely jumping on the VR bandwagon. Nothing stands out more than when you brand your booth with Oculus Killer, when you say so many different features that your system has, and then you fail to deliver in every possible respect. There, there's 3D head. It, it is a big virtual console. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's not actual virtual reality. It, and it's something you put on your head, but it's basically a tablet that's just in front of your face. And it, it's a 3D tablet, so it kind of shows some kind of 3D. So it's not virtual reality. No. It uses outdated technology. I hear it weighs a lot. It costs $600, and if you want the convoluted controller that has buttons for every video setting, you're gonna pay $1,000 for this thing? Yeah, that one's a bit of a joke, but of no, course... it's a joke. <laughs> Not a bit of a joke. It's yeah, a no, joke. Okay. So that one's a complete joke. Yeah. But there are some other guys who are trying some interesting things, and yeah. it'll be really cool to see where they go. One of them Lou just saw was the Sulon VR. Yeah. Uh, so it's a mix of like augmented reality and virtual reality. And while what you're seeing is all 3D modeled, and you know that's the virtual reality part of it, what it does is it uh, scans the environment, and it contextualizes what it shows you in virtual reality based on what it sees around you. Essentially, you had a car engine that if you move your hands apart, it would blow up to pieces. But you were in a room and you could see the borders and they matched the room that you were in. So that's actually pretty interesting because a thing like the Oculus, that takes something that's created beforehand outside of the context of where you are and you kind of walk around in that world. Sulan's thing actually lets you do things that are unique based on your environment. And, and as cool as Oculus is, we still don't have a, an input solution for that yet. Whereas Sulan uses your hands. You hold your hands out in front of you, it can, it can see your fingers. They're using something that's uh, akin to the Leap Motion, which is widely available. You can buy it at Best Buy today. Oculus can do that. I mean, there are applications on the web that allow you to mix the yeah. two together. Oculus just isn't doing that themselves. Maybe they've got something in the works that's going to be a competitor. Now, something that's really scary with any kind of VR that you wear on your head and you walk around is that you can't see the world around you. And we kind of stepped over one another and each other, and I'm really scared for that kind of future. But there was one other VR tech that was also using your hands, the, that same kind of off-the-shelf proprietary technology, the OS VR, which we saw from Razer. Yeah, Razer had a, essentially a VR headset that's kind of akin to the Oculus. It sort of takes the same approach to VR and uses a similar thing like the Leap Motion, like they were using with the Sulan. And you were you know, playing like a wizard and you could fire fireballs at enemies that were coming at you in waves. Now that was very interesting. What's more interesting is that Razer is not doing this to compete with Oculus. They're doing it to proliferate the development of new virtual technology, virtual reality technology, by opening up the plans for the software and the hardware to anyone who wants to access it and then iterate upon it. So then what you've basically got is a, a world where people, people are inventing on their own without having to get it through all the initial research and development. So they're kind of doing a great thing for VR, and down the road, Razer is going to take the best of that, maybe sell something on their own, but really their end is to create the user interface and the controls that will work with VR in the future. So 2015 is gonna be a really big year for virtual reality and just getting these systems out there, getting something that you can purchase and you can try out. Maybe it's not the best experience yet, but, but I think it's really paving the way for what we're gonna see in 2016 when these experiences come to fruition, when we see input devices that make you feel like you're actually a part of that virtual environment. Yeah, we're only two years into virtual reality development as it comes to mainstream related to Oculus. So we're, it's gonna be really exciting to see how fast things ramp up now that we've gone so far. So, and I'm really excited for CES 2016 when all of this comes to fruition to see what that new technology is gonna be.